Thank you so much for joining the class. Uh, this will be a kind of semester kickoff, as always. Um, welcome to IT727. So for the class today, we would uh, kind of just go over uh, some of the syllabus requirements, the books uh, that we are expecting, actually the book that we are recommending to use. Can everybody please go on mute? And then also um, the class expectations along with the deliverables. Uh, there wouldn't be any heavy lecture today and there's no cause for alarm in the sense of there will be no assignment, nothing like that. So it's totally okay. We have to, um, the week, the Monday after Labor Day weekend. So I believe it will be, is it the 13th or so? For us to really start deep diving into that. So what I will do um, really today is just to, hold in a second, again, having issues with my slide. All right, great. So what I will do today is just kind of um, introduce myself. Um, you have the class DA Fortune will kind of go over themselves, uh, himself as well, just to introduce himself. And we'll talk about the resources related to the class, as well as the detailed expectations and deliverables we're anticipating, uh, at least by December, and then go over um, the grading method, as well as the high level due dates and all of those granular information. I'll also give a high level demo of how we are going, um, how we will be structuring the class on Canvas. Hopefully it aligns with um, everybody and also makes people life easier, but please, if anyone needs any accommodation or adjustment, uh, just let us know. Um, a quick one, as I go through this, just keep in mind, uh, keep an open mind that it's, nothing is written in stone. So definitely uh, move things around to really accommodate schedules. I know some of you are not on um, the Eastern time zone. Some of you are actually out of the country and things like that. So we'll work with you to make sure um, uh, you're not left behind and you have a great experience in the class. However, we also kind of um, defined things already, like there is um, detailed requirements, scheduling, due dates, and whatsoever. So just don't get thrown up by that. If you anticipate uh, the due dates or anything will not work for you, feel free to reach out. Um, the earlier, the better. But yeah, let's know that we are ready to support you. Um, all right, going into details, not gonna spend time here. This is just about me. Uh, by the way, this deck is also uploaded now on Canvas. So if you wanna know about me, <laughs> you can read. I'm not that fun, but high level. Um, this is this August is actually my fourth year at Marymount, uh, teaching at Marymount. I'm not a full-time faculty. I'm an adjunct faculty. So uh, my primary job, or I will say my day job is uh, I work at Microsoft, uh, primarily on the cloud and AI division. So um, Day-to-day -day operations include just getting the U.S. Sorry, getting the Azure Cloud ready for U.S. national security consumption. Um, but not, nothing fun. Uh, everything here you can read at your time. But um, yeah, if anybody rides a motorcycle on your local and your board, you don't have anyone to ride with. Let me know. Happy to join you. <laughs> um, so yeah. Is there anything here? Nope. Uh, Fortune, do you want to kind of quickly go over yourself and then we will? Yeah, yeah. sure. Hey, yeah. hey everyone. Uh, my name is Fortune Zarike. Um, I'm the TA this year for uh, Marymount University. This is actually my first time being TA, but I've been a doctoral student for over a year now. I'm a doctoral student just like you all in the same program, um, set to graduate 2023 if everything goes smoothly. Uh, but during my day job, my nine to five job, I actually work at Microsoft right now as a security program manager, uh, where I'm on the SEC, um, SEC operation team, security operation teams and doing a lot of different things. Um, uh, besides that, um, I just like to have a good time brunching, exercising, dress up in suits, collecting shoes and all that great stuff. So I look forward to meeting you all. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ping me. Well, thank you so much, Fletcher. He sounds much more interesting than I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm a boring person. <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you so much, Fortune. Also, um, first year students, if this is your first time um, starting the PhD uh, here at Marymount, definitely, definitely use Fortune as a resource in terms of, um, as you mentioned, he's also the, a student in the same program. Um, 
if PhD, we all know it can be chaotic and uh, there's really no clear path because you're left to, you're just given the recipe and you cook whatever you want as such. If you need some guidance, help, um, feel free to reach out to us. There are a lot of resources. And also the fact that the program is still kind of new at Marymount, you will still come across things that are yet to be fleshed out. So, I mean, at least in this class, we will work with you to support that. So I believe everybody knows this class, but if you don't, here's the name. I uh, don't think, um, yeah, I'll be surprised if you are able to join this meeting without knowing what the class is. But yeah, it's a um, three hour credit class. Also, I know the class says IT 727A, and normally our A designations are meant for in person, but um, the class is going to run as hybrid. I actually just checked it there and it seems initially it was meant to be 50 50, like 50 online, 50 on campus, but I just saw them. Up Look, uh, updated it to like 50 to 75. So we'll, we'll see with COVID and everything, we'll see how it goes. Um, again, the experience will not differ, be it we, for a day we are going to meet in person or we are going to meet um, fully aligned or uh, wherever you are, I believe we will um, accommodate things. Uh, I don't think the experience will differ. Um, obviously, everybody is on Zoom. So I think we are all clear on the A part. Let's talk a little bit about meeting on campus. So a few of you I know are local. And if I was thinking, I haven't finalized, but open to suggestion. If five people are, agree that they want to meet in person, then I might end up going into campus. If not, um, anything less than that, I will just decide to kind of be remote fully. Fortune is actually out in Atlanta. Um, so he will 100% be remote. And I know some of you sent me an email that uh, you're also out of state and whatever concerned if you are able to join or if you will participate in the class, you are absolutely okay. Uh, no worries at all. Um, again, everybody knows the class run on EST time zone. Uh, for the on-campus and in-person meetup, what we are going to do is, and probably we'll send out an email by Friday to let you know, but the plan will be to actually submit a poll on a weekly basis. I apologize if you keep hearing some random noise. It's just my son is upstairs and I'm in the basement and I think he thinks he's in like the storm, the yard or some movie like that, just busy bouncing. But anyway, um, going back to the in-person point I was making, we will be releasing polls on a weekly basis and people can select or rather elect to meet in person or not. And as I mentioned, if five people agree, I don't mind just going into campus. Obviously, we'll still have to follow Marymount's COVID-19 guidelines, but we'll be fine. Uh, meeting time, same time. Uh, I believe you now, everybody knows uh, the detail because you, you wouldn't be able to join if you do not know. This is the third time I'm saying this, but please add it to your calendar expectations. So please, please, if you are unclear about the class expectations and kind of PhD classes in general, let me know. I'm happy to spend some time to go over that with you. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is, again, being a PhD class, you wouldn't find us going very granular. And this information might be more for those who um, this is your first semester, this is your first time in a PhD program. For the veterans here that uh, are in their second, third semesters, I believe you are familiar with this. So it's not applicable to you, but the class will be very high level. Don't expect a deep dive handholding of how to do things. There will be a lot of effort on the students to close the gaps from supplemental readings and whatsoever. But as always, we are available to provide guidance and more details around things and where to start. If your background is not cyber related or tech related or whatever. Again, the class is very interdisciplinary as I always see um, cybersecurity is really not just a technology thing. You can come from a law background, any background and still have a place in uh, cybersecurity. And especially when we talk about risk management in general, every single field, there is some part of risk management related to that. So you'll find that there is a diverse perspective uh, from the class. So 
However, if you feel overwhelmed, I don't know, I'm just throwing something out there, um, not nitpicking anyone, but if your background is in English, and this is literally going to be your first time taking something related to cybersecurity whatsoever, it might require some more investment on your part to close some of the gaps, and you might feel the workload, but it doesn't mean you're alone. Please, 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 as always, reach out and ask for help. We wouldn't know until your request, but as if you had to request, we will definitely work with you to make sure you're fully supported. Um, some of you either have friends or have probably seen it on my GitHub or the YouTube videos and things like that on how this class used to run. I made a lot of changes due to two things, or actually I will say three things. One, COVID. Uh, what I began to realize is, um, I think this is the third year or second year I'm teaching this class, but I know I started teaching pre-COVID. Uh, the requirements of the class was usually driven uh, in person and things like that. And applying that methodology to the class online and during, honestly, this COVID time was just a lot on everybody. Um, so had to tweak a lot of things. Second, um, which I will also expect from you guys is feedback, but some of the, we've been improving the classes. So as I mentioned, this I think is my sixth time teaching this class, so almost three years or so, I can't remember, but a lot of improvements have been going from day zero to this semester. So as I always say, is you guys are getting the, best we can do right now related to the class. I will expect really feedback from you guys um, from that evaluation so that it, the class gets even more better for um, the next students. One of that feedback that we got was um, quizzes. Seems like everybody hates quizzes. Hey, me too, I hate exams, so no more quizzes. Uh, there wouldn't be anything like that. So those kind of tweaks, you will see it. So basically what I'm trying to say is, please, if you have friends or you have seen the class requirements and details elsewhere, do not think it's the same. The class have significantly changed quite a lot, actually. I will say more than 50% of the class content and methodology have changed. So as such, do not take previous classes requirements and knowledge that you get from your friends and whatever and apply it to this. No, it's not gonna work. I would rather you invest in this. And if you're lost, let me know or reach out to Fortune as well. All right. Resources that we'll be using in the class. Um, honestly, none. And by saying none, I mean there is no requirements. Uh, the book, this used to be required. I used to really do the first half of the class based on the Isaac C risk uh, textbook because it's really um, exhaustive. I think my copy is here. Oh, I actually left it over there, but uh, and it's super kind of certification driven. There's actually a certification for that and the quizzes were based on the certifications. And then I began to get a lot of feedback from students as saying, well, the class is not meant to be a certification. And we all know how certifications can be very different from really learning, right? Um, so there will be no requirement for the textbook or even the quizzes or whatever. But the first part of the class will still follow based on the content of the class. And if you ask me why, I would say ISACA has built a reputation for really being the cyber risk management kind of encompassing body, especially within uh, the financial sector, technology, and lately they're getting into that governance aspect of it, right? Um, so more executive driven. Um, if you know a lot about certifications, we all know how like CEH is more hands and technical, uh, hands on and technical OSCP and things like that. Really, there's no much governance part of it. You look at something like um, CISSP is just all over the place, right? It's the domains are really a lot, and <laughs> anybody that knows that knows we cannot really say we are going to follow that method. And if you look at this class, it's risk management. If you relate it to something like CISSP only, I think one or two domain are related to risk management, the rest are heavily technical, which isn't applicable to this class. So because there is that governance or risk management part of this, 
you find ISACA is always geared towards executive. That's why we're using the um, this book. So before I used to give quizzes, and I used to say, if you have the certification, you don't need to take the quiz. Well, that no longer applies because there is no quiz. As such, there is really, whether you have the certification or not, there is really no difference. I guess if you have the certification, it's just, you know, probably interrupt me if I'm teaching, if I see some crap that is all right, excuse my language, but, you know, if I see something that isn't accurate and Please write to me. A lot of you here have so many good experience. Some of you, like I've, I was saying the introduction, some of you have been <laughs> doing this even before I was born. That's just the absolute truth. So please, please, please. I always welcome feedback, improvement points. If you are very conversant on a specific topic that is aligned to this class and you feel like you just want to share it with the class, please let us know ahead of time and we'll provide accommodation for that. Absolutely. I also want to learn from you. So let's make it... Um, more synchronous teaching rather than just a one way where we are just feeding you. No, that's not the idea. Yeah. Um, what more? So again, that's the book. Can be quite pricey. It's up to you if you want to buy it or not. I will still teach the class content. The first, I think, first four lectures will be based on the book. We'll follow kind of the um, uh, book content, but. Again, it's up to you if you want to copy or not, or if you want to go get an older version. I honestly don't care. There's really no deliverable that is based on the content. We will cover things high level. Uh, we will upload additional resources and readings and things like that. Um, maybe things like NIST or PCI DSS or other even risk management frameworks and things like that that exist. We'll upload a lot of those open source documentations on Canvas just for reading. Around resources, you will see on Canvas, and later on I will show you. Um, one thing I realized during COVID, once we started teaching this class on COVID, is due to the lack of in-person meeting and that kind of side talks, there is limited guidance on what the crypt clear expectation is on the class. So this semester we are going to use rubrics, and I'm going to provide templates for all the uh, reports and papers that will be written, at least to kind of really clarify and uh, remove that ambiguity or rather reduce the ambiguity um, around what the deliverables and expectations are. You can always reach out if things are not clear, but please, 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 make sure you're familiar with what the rubric is as well as the templates. We are yet to upload them. You will see the sections on Canvas, but Definitely grading and everything will be based on that requirement unless there is a specific exception given. All right. Um, next after the resources is what are the class expectations and deliverables? So I will talk about each of these at a very granular uh, uh, level in the subsequent slides, but we will have the introduction and active participation um, introduction. I believe you guys have I've seen a lot of you kind of commented on the um, introduction side of Canvas. Please, for those of you that have been sending and introducing yourself via the Canvas email kind of thing, please, please, please go and put it in the right place. You know, meant to introduce yourself via email. Um, let's reduce the email notifications that we're getting. Um, active participation, please be engaged. Uh, there are parts that actually do require you to be engaged. And uh, then um, we will have a group project. The group project will be based on three parts. There will be a practical hands-on activity. So what I used to do before was kind of go through that entire ATO process. If you're not familiar with the ATO process, just think of it like the RMF process in general, but based on the US Gov and doing the NIST and whatever, with a little part of um, the implementation phase where you will just do it, but then so much paperwork, SSP and everything. And uh, one student wrote a feedback. She, they said they appreciate the class and everything, but honestly, the practical part to them is just nothing but just introducing government, US Gov bureaucratic process, which isn't necessarily learning, but just some roadblocks. Resonate, I agree with that. So I'm like, yeah, 
why have people do just random paperwork like SSPs and everything rather than having them grasp the full reason and rationale and what's the substance behind actually doing that? So a search on Finjanet completely. No more ATO. Um, it's going to be a full technical kind of secure implementation. By doing that, I don't mean you have to go build, I don't know, the next big thing. Um, any technical implementation that is from a security perspective is fine. And based on that, there will be a report and a presentation. I will talk about this in depth uh, in the subsequent slides. Um, this is aligned with how the class usually is, but um, there will be weekly comments. So I'll, we will have kind of like discussions on a weekly basis and the comments, they usually happen on Canvas. And based on that, we will also have a discussion report and there will be a final paper. All of these will be available. Every single thing we are trying to get it, everything out before the next class on 13th, such that you can plan ahead, just take it however you like. Obviously everything in green, excluding the word group there is the um, grading and points uh, allocated to that, but we'll cover that in the um, subsequent slide. So let's go in detail on what are the expectations regarding introduction and active participation. I think this is high level and please read this, it's self-explanatory. But um, if you go on Canvas, you'll see that we have structured the class based on modules on a weekly basis. I'm continuously trying to rather, um, I will say we are because um, fortune is always helping, but we are continuously trying to take this minimalistic approach to what Canvas should look like, just put the focus, like remove the noise, right? You just follow it based on the weekly basis and I'll cover it in a bit. And then also, um, as I mentioned, there'll be the report group activity and all of those, those are the deliverables, we'll talk about it, but please participate in the class lectures. And uh, again, make sure you're familiar on the class what this class is, not necessarily just the expectation. Like what is the overview of the class? The class is really executive approach to things as from a government, uh, sorry, from a governance perspective, that leadership perspective, risk management, decision-making and everything. So don't expect to come out of this class knowing how to configure Kubernetes because that's what, not the, what we are going to come, uh, teach in this class. Nor are we going to, teach how to, um, no, you're not gonna know, learn how to use AWS or Azure or whatever. Um, your technical knowledge will be helpful, but the class is not meant to teach you technical skill set. Even though we do have a project and uh, gr the group activity, we do have a technical side of things. It's not necessarily going to teach you how to, you're just expected to do a couple of things. So part of the group will discuss it in detail. So if you don't have any of that technical skill sets or technical know-how from a hands-on, the class doesn't require you to learn that as well. That's why everything is in a group. You might take the role of being the one to write the report and then identify someone in the class who is very technical to help with that. If eventually everybody, like if you can find anyone as part of the group assignment, let us know and we'll work something out, but yeah. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the class is interdisciplinary. So really, technical skill set is not a prereq for the class. Um, what next? Again, um, you'll find that we have like five weeks where I keep writing like activity as a cybersecurity activity or whatsoever. It's because we will just introduce a lot of different secure implementations, secure deployments. Um, concepts like instead of just talking about what incident report looks like we will create an incident and see how we should respond to it from a technical standpoint uh monitoring for example we might probably um i might probably set up a splunk environment i'm not teaching you how to use splunk per se but i'm going to show like what monitoring looks like in say secure uh, security operations centers what does like a fire drill related to incident response look like? Or what does even secure configuration looks like? Maybe we might deploy some containers. We honestly have not fleshed it out. But the idea is not necessarily to teach how to, again, I keep repeating that. It's more so to do it so we understand the different phases of risk management. Um, 
we might leverage the NIST methodology from that six or seven um, steps, starting well, based on the new 800 37 that came out, I guess we can see six, but starting from like that plan and prepare stage to categorization, um, uh, implementate selection, implementation, and all of those introduce the concept of security controls, but all of those will be really doing it not just talking about it and doing the paperwork. So um, you will be expected to participate. It will be more like a round table where we're all on Zoom. Maybe I'm configuring things. You just poke around. Who knows? Just we're still thinking of what it will look like. Um, and we will continuously provide more details on that. So introducing yourself and active participation will take 5% of your grade. I have written, just to make things easy for everybody, literally, I, as you can see, your to-do is on the right side. Go over it uh, when you get the chance. I'm trying to see, is there anything on the to-do that we need to talk in depth? Um, yeah, if you are local, number nine, if you're local, please participate in the in-person poll. Whether you want to meet in person or you do not, please go ahead and uh, participate in the poll so we know if, I'll, it will be helpful if I can actually know by Friday or Saturday. That way I know if on Monday I need to go in. I think Mariman has like this app where you need to check in or everything, but I'll catch up on that. Just keep in mind that if we are going to meet in person, then we'll follow Mariman um, COVID-19 guidelines. Uh, what next? Get the textbook if you're interested. Again, not um, the week that is coming. Is, the ne next week is Labor Day weekend. The week after we are meeting, but you wouldn't need the textbook because at that stage we are just introducing the concept of risk management. Then the week after, if you need it, then that's when you might uh, kind of have to get the textbook. But please ask questions. We can read your mind. Unless you ask, we don't know. If you need help, reach out. Don't wait till it's too late if you can plan. Um, but obviously, life happens. Things are impromptu. We we'll always understand there's no strictness on that. But also help us make our life easy. Thank you. Uh, next, let's get into what the group project will look like. Um, starting with the overview of that. As I mentioned earlier, there will be three parts to it. There will be doing the actual implementation like that requires a technical skill set, there will be a report and they'll be presenting the project towards the end of the semester on what you've done and going over the report. Um, the technical implementations of that project must, I know a very strong, very strong word there under must, it must be security focused. What does that mean? Setting up an environment is not a security focused activity. Um, so then go set up, a virtual machine or you know, install a fresh copy of Windows and think that's a security focus, then no. That's doing the implementation and now you have to secure it, right? You will specify what you're securing. So let me, just a hypothetical example. Um, let's say you set up a network address storage uh, or maybe, yeah, you just set up a NAS, like some uh, network um storage right setting it up is not necessarily a security focused task setting it up is just a technical implementation now the security for focus activity will, will be like ensuring the, that um the nas is encrypted when um it stores data um at rest ensuring that uh because it's remote uh as you access it probably even if it's via um, SSH or whatever it is, everything is um, encrypted in transit. How are you configuring that? All of those, now I'm getting overly technical. Um, a more simplified one, if you set up a new environment, maybe um, clean a Windows, sorry, clean a laptop and just install a fresh copy of Windows, that's just a technical kind of configuration and implementation. Now, hardening it will be the secure focus kind of activity, maybe setting up the password and multi-factor authentication. Um, what next? Encrypting 
your hard drive. If it's Windows machine, maybe use them with BitLocker. If it's, uh, I don't know, what's the one for Mac? Ever since I joined Microsoft, I've been getting away from you, the MacBooks. But yeah, there is it something Vault on Mac devices? Uh, all of those are more security focused kind of um, implementation and activities, but we'll deep dive into that later in the class. And if you need guidance or if you want to validate if the project you're working on is truly a security focus, then feel free to reach out as always, we'll be available and uh, we'll work with you. Now, doing that, um, Actually, I'll add another one because I know I mentioned secure implementation and deployment. It doesn't stop there. Another technical hands-on activity could be maybe you can set up some logs capturing, right? Um, set up a virtual machine and start capturing logs, like login, logout sessions, and things like that, activity sessions, um, all of those. And now you are passing those logs to really make sense of it by identifying who access the environment, who did not, uh, what time did they access it and things like that. Those are security focused things around monitoring. Uh, you can create a fire drill, right? Set up an environment, crash it, and then how do you respond to it? That's a security focus activity. Um, all right, getting into the number two, which is the second part of the project. As I mentioned, the project comprises of three things. So the report, it's just a basic report, whatever it is. Technical implementation, you gotta write a report. Um, later in this class, you will keep hearing me talk about the need to document, document, document. Risk management is, everything is about documentation, right? Uh, um, for those of you who are previous sys admins, I hated when I was a sys administrator. I always complain, but it's one of the most rewarding job and annoying job I ever did. I was a system administrator for quite some time, system administrator, network administrator and everything. And one thing we know is, especially if you just started the job, good documentation is always available, right? But then we have that habit of doing things our own way and just not configuring it uh, and documenting it the right way. And then having the next person come in and not understanding anything or taking time to really understand what needs to be done. So imagine if you, there is an incident and now you have to respond to that incident without proper guidelines, of who, uh, what to do, who to call, all of those then additional issues present themselves. So we will have a technical report. Whatever uh, the activity is, we will write that report. And I will provide a template of what the report should look like as well as a rubric that kind of put a focus and highlights what those requirements should be. And then, um, uh, as I mentioned, it should follow the template that we will provide and please submit it on Canvas. Please do not submit anything by sending an email unless we have agreed on that, you know? I, we absolutely understand if there is a need for accommodation on that or whatever it is, but please, please, please do not email me especially. I don't know if you wanna work with Fortune and email it to him and he uploads it on your behalf. I don't know, but then email me your submission because I absolutely will not grade it. Just upload it to Canvas. Um, however, if, you know, I think someone emailed me today to let me know that they cannot access Canvas. Can I please share the meeting link? That's understandable because something happened. They can't access Canvas. So, you know, if issues happen, reach out, absolutely. But please, if you have access to Canvas, just upload it there. Um, in addition to the report, we will have a presentation. The presentation will be focused on you, the group just walking us through what they did, right? Uh, just introducing us to that, uh, nothing major, but we will let, um, the group will decide on how they want to present. I, as much as I hate PowerPoints in my life, I still teach using PowerPoints because it's just the conventional way students consume things and for offline, access sometimes people uh, prefer that but if you are up to me i will be doing my slides on like a browser or some markdown format and uploading it but again so if you want to present using your powerpoint go for it if you want to present by actually logging into your environment or showing us the technical implementation and walking us through and discuss it however you want i don't care um feel free to do it the key in presentation is not the format 
it's more on the communication. And keep in mind, towards the end of the semester, uh, that's when the presentations will happen, and we the presentation will be timed. We don't know how many minutes, but more details will come after. Now, due dates uh, for the report and everything is highlighted in red, but the entire group project will take 30% of your grade, quite a sizable chunk. Um, Again, get it into the requirements, the rubric, I've covered that, technical report will be on Canvas. Now, the group will be of, of three people. Um, so far, I've just kind of put six groups. Some of you might drop, other people might uh, get added. It's totally fine, we'll work it out. If you find yourself, you're the only one in the group, let me know and we'll find ways to do that. But the group will be, consists of three kind of um, members or more, and we'll split the work. But the idea will be, <laughs> it's more of this individual collaborative effort, right? Where it's a group working on the same thing, but there is also a, as an individual contributor. So the group sh should have one person take on the technical side of things. The others can chime on, but or provide their perspective or agree on exactly, come together and agree on how it should be done. But one person owns the delivery of that technical side of things to the group. They should be the most conversant person in terms of um, the technical side of things. And, you know, that will include, like, basically, that person shall have a technical skill set. Report. That should be someone who is really good at writing the reports. Um, I don't know, it's a risk management class. Uh, for some of you who are from the US Gov side of things, you're familiar with ATO, probably the person who always writes the SSP documentations, uh, the SSP and all of those random deliverables, right? Those paperwork, maybe that's the person you should assign to write the report. Most times they are not the ones who do the technical implementation. Rather, they interview the person who does the technical implementation and write the report. Then there'll be the presentation. That should be also the third group member who should lead that effort. And we will release a spreadsheet where you're going to sign up to us, identify who owns what in the group, because that's how we will kind of evaluate each person's contribution as a group. The rationale and idea behind this is for the veterans who have been in the workforce and have gone through this, a lot of you have more experience than I do, honestly, in this. Um, already know that cybersecurity risk management is all about the collaborative effort, right? Um, the information sharing across team members. Um, then now bring it in the diverse skill set. You look at the entire, I'll keep using the like framework approach to things. You find there are the devs and the engineers who you submit the non-functional requirements and the functional requirements on how things should be configured, how it should be done. You finish submitting that, they literally put on their headphones and ignore you and just go do the job, but they suck at writing the documentation or even presenting it. Now you have those who have that writing skills whatsoever, they are terrible in implementation. They probably don't even know how to implement whatsoever, but they will be able to interview um, those folks. Let's think of assessors, actually, right? Like they might be able to interview whatsoever and be the ones to actually write the report based on what they interview, uh, based on the response from the devs and the engineers and the technical uh, folks, right? Now you have the those that really do the presentation. It's possible someone knows how to write, but they suck at talking public speaking whatsoever, those with the charm, right? Those that will have the um, authorizing official, you know, smile and quickly just sign the documentation. Or if it's a contract, you know, um, like let's talk proposal work. If it's responding, I used to be a consultant by the way, that's why uh, with one of the big four. So yeah, I'm all about that. I used to be all about that proposal lifestyle. But yeah, you know, someone write the proposal, but there are those who will actually go with the pitch deck, talk about how everything is gonna go, you know, bring in that soft touch and uh, empathy side of things to do the presentation. And you find 
by having those diverse kind of um, skill set to form the group and the team, then it's much better. But if you go right now, and I'm literally talk, telling everybody now in the class, especially folks who have their friends, if both of you are technical, heavily technical, you decide to be on the same group, honestly, you're not doing yourself a favor. I would say look for someone who has the one of the skill sets here and what exactly do you have? Again, the presentation. You don't have to know anything cybersecurity related. You just need to interview your team members and be conversant on it. And honestly, present it. If a question is asked, you direct it. So that's part of that, we'll do it. In the class, the only thing we will cover is the hands-on technical activity. I will not write a report. Uh, we will not write a report or whatsoever. That's why we are submitting a template. And we're not gonna present. Literally, the class session is presentation. I will, especially just like right now, I'll keep doing the, a lot of talking, right? Um, what's your to-do related to the project? Obviously, delivery of the project, but sign up for your groups. I will not auto-assign that but I would absolutely look into the assignments much later. And if I realize like a group comprised of three technical folks who they are, are capable of doing all of the three, right? But then there's this group who are completely from non-risk management, um, uh, who have zero risk management skill set or any of these skill set, probably they can present a rather a report with zero skill set uh, as it relates to the technical. I will move things around. But again, I'm just opening the floor for folks to um, decide on how to do things. That's why commenting on the introducing yourself, what are some of your skill set will allow the other class members to know, okay, I know how to write a report. This person knows how to do the technical work, let me look at which group they are in or let me reach out to them. So please do so. Um, obviously, once you do that, you'll be able to assign the lead for each of the three sections. Again, ask questions, please reach out, reach out, reach out and ask questions. I know I, I'm not opening the floor for questions, but please, if you have any questions, just keep writing it down. Once I'm done presenting the entire deck, I will just kind of open and then we deep dive onto your own questions. Okay. That's it, done with group project for now. We can touch on it much later. Every week, there will be comments and discussions, right? Basically the same thing. The way it usually goes is I, we will come up with a uh, equation and we will try and literally put all the equations before the next class for the entire semester, so you plan ahead. But we will ask different types of cyber-related kind of topics, you will see it. Questions and discussions. There is no right or wrong answer, truly. There is just a response. So comment on it. Some of you are very good and conversant as specialists and whatsoever in this field. So we will learn a lot from you. Some of you, are just starting. Some of you are going through a career change. It's okay. You don't need to be an expert. It's just meant to be conversational. It's just meant to be um, a discussion and uh, just sharing your side of things and how you understand it, but obviously not opinionated uh, or opinion based, rather looking at uh, the topic, understanding what's going on, and then formulating a response to comment on that. Um, topics will range from a lot of sectors, from policy standpoint, from governance, from technology and technical implementation, from trends, from you name it. Uh, let me give an example of each. We can talk about, recently actually, this administration released an executive order uh, because they want to strengthen cyber and whatsoever, we can introduce a topic on that. And literally go read it up and cherry pick it. If you want, critique it. If you want, agree with it. If you want, propose strategy, whatever comment you want to do, tear it apart. You just got to be up to speed on it, be up to date on it, and respond to it. You will find that 
this whole side of field, if you remove the technical side of things, the leadership side of uh, cyber, like being a CISO and whatever, it's truly, truly being up to date on trends. What's the new hottest thing? What are the new threats? How do you respond? How do you plan? How do you coordinate? So it's just information based on decision making. Um, we will also talk about governance, right? Governance, it depends. You cannot take a strategy that a library will use towards securing their devices and apply the same strategy and governance approach to say maybe, um, I don't know, the intelligence sector like CIA or whatever, or map it to say DOD, absolutely not, right? If you're familiar with the CIA triads, a library might prioritize availability of information. So if they are really under threat or under attack or whatever, the default or maybe the default, um, uh, by default, they might just configure the devices, not by, I'm sorry, not by default, like they might configure library devices to really be available, just open once it's under attack, like let the information be available because it's a library, it's meant to share information. So you can apply the same method to devices within say, I don't know, DOD or the, um, the intelligence sector or any secure, or national security related organization. Maybe their default approach will be as soon as some form of attack is ongoing, please lock down the entire systems. Literally, actually clean up the files, right? Or uh, erase everything. Um, burn the entire drives, you know? Or uh, burn the building, who knows, right? Um, that's confidentiality. Uh, Again, now, if you look at a place like, say, I'm thinking, should have thought about this ahead, maybe CDC, right? So trying to provide information related to COVID. If the systems are going under any attack whatsoever, the topmost priority is ensuring that the integrity of the information is accurate, right? Uh, such that it's still serving as a resource for information and the, um, trust and validity of that information is the most important thing. So uh, really integrity is the priority. So these are kind of like governance approach, strategies and whatsoever, again, cyber related, but not necessarily technical uh, implementation. So also we might, pro uh, I might ask a question around by like giving a scenario. Uh, so, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, maybe give an organization and suggest should they build their own servers or really consume from a cloud service provider? That's more on a technical strategy, technical implementations. Uh, should you deploy, a, you, have, you have to build an app that tracks COVID uh, related issues whatsoever. This is what's going on. This is the budget. This is the expense of this. Is it better to really containerize that app so that it's easily migrate, you can migrate it from one cloud to another or no, build it as a native, right? An example is maybe build the app using .NET. Then it means you're locked into Microsoft services, right? Um, or maybe should you use one of those frameworks and whatever that is just open source and easily migratable and whatever. And don't get me wrong, there is no right or wrong app, uh, response to this, there is just, the scenario, what is the right thing to do? Um, tech trends, deep fakes that happened, like COVID started happening, we've been seeing a lot. Oh, by the way, we didn't touch on this. You will hear some expensive jokes from me, um, but I am entitled to do it. Fortune can as well. I have a Nigerian background, Fortune have a Nigerian background. So, you know, that kind of, we're not going to, I'm not the prince, but someday I might, you know, Crack a joke as a prince, just kidding. But yeah, I mean, like we have phishing attacks, we have ransomware, we have every day we are just hearing new forms of attacks presenting itself. We will talk about it, right? Even if it's not the attack in itself, we might talk about a technology in itself, the new technology that is coming out and try to explore what are the security related things that are worthy of thinking, right? 
we might say talk about AI and robotics and whatsoever and present ethics. And you'll be like, why the hell am I taking talking about ethics and philosophy when I'm literally and morals and whatever when I'm really in a cybersecurity class? Well, guess what? You will begin to realize that ultimately the governance side of things is driven by the society, right? We would introduce sensitive topics. That's why if you look at the student to do, I said, be cordial, please. Because some of these are driven by, especially the policy, they are driven by politics, regional, demographics, and all of those. So please be cordial and respectful, right? Um, let me give a couple of examples. We might talk about how the US is responding to Huawei being a Chinese company. Everybody can tear it apart. Some will agree that the US is right to do that. Some will think like, no, we live in this internet world. There's no right or wrong answer. There's just your viewpoint. When you get to that leadership level, you then begin to realize what is your mission? What are your objectives? That's what drives your decision making, not necessarily technical implementation or any of that. If you're a dev in here or an engineer or someone with so much hands on, I apologize, but you will keep hearing me minimize technical work because the truth is nobody cares about technical implementation until the strategy and decision have been made. That drives every technical implementation and use cases. Technology is just a tool, it's not the thing. You might wake up tomorrow and technology is not the number one tool. Might be a while, but it's possible. Um, so please be cordial. Uh, we could introduce a couple of years. Uh, the previous administration, there is a time when TikTok, conversation around finding TikTok was heavy and whatever. Guess what? That's also cyber security related issues because it's related to national security. When we introduce it, people differ. Some of us will find our opinion and our background, our where we come from heavily influence how we say it. Doesn't matter. We'll share it, we'll be respectful of each other. Just make sure, please, you're cordial. I will call you out. Definitely will reach out to you if I sense anything, but I've never had it. But please be mindful. Um one point I will make is for those of you who are also within US Gov and also who have been working and also um, have your own primary jobs and whatsoever. So you're not just a full-time student, uh, you also have a full-time job and whatever. You will find as we are doing these discussions, there is a tendency of oversharing. Be mindful, please, please, please to not share proprietary information, things related to your company. If you have a clearance, obviously you have to read in. So, just be mindful of those things, right? Because uh, this can happen. Um, every discussion happened on Canvas. I will show you how it goes. It's just a discussion board. Um, because it's not meant to be uh, synchronous, so there is no back and forth. Uh, you just respond to the question I asked from your own perspective, and then we will deliberate it in like, just like this. People will just be chiming in. Because of that, you will only see the question and you will only be able to comment. Until you comment, that's when you will see other people's response. So <laughs> my first time teaching this class, I used to leave it very open and I used to be part of it. I no longer engage. You will not see one comment from me. I will just only, I will only read. I am not the most aware person, trust me, in this class. The only difference is I'm just the instructor, just because for some random reason I have a PhD, but some of you have so much work experience and so much to share that we will all learn. But what I began to understand is every single time a student sees someone's comment or I even comment, then it drives the entire response towards that direction. That's not the goal. The goal is to continuously break fresh perspectives. So we learn from each other, so we really see the different side of things. If you are, <laughs> don't hit me. If you are heavily technical, um, you will find it very easy to justify that, yeah, 
Well, were you shocked by the newest and shiny device that came, that just comes out? Yeah, Apple just released Apple. Is it Apple iPhone? I think in 12 or 13 that's coming out. Apple just released iPhone 13. That's it. Just go get the new fancy device. This new server is out. You don't care whether the budget is justified, whether there is a use case. If you're technical, we tend to be that unless you are at that leadership skill uh, level. You just want the newest and shiny and the fastest device. But it might not be justified, right? Because there's no requirement for that. I don't want the comments to be driven in one perspective. So probably hearing someone's perspective will then begin to you know, let you know that your cupcake website that is meant to provide uh, uh, your shop's address does not necessarily need to have TLS and SSL certificate or TLS certificate because there's nothing there. Nobody, I mean, it's just the address or probably just a picture of a cupcake. Nothing, you don't process payment or whatever. So maybe you don't need to put it, but obviously TLS certificate now is so basic that you should have it just for, so people will, because it's also provide trust, but that's a classic example. Um, all right, moving on. You must comment before you see other comments, questions. I will provide the questions so we'll upload it there uh pre-covid it used to be i will put the questions two weeks ahead and people respond but now uh we will just put everything and you plan ahead you do you if you wanna block the time and respond to everything fine by me uh you cannot you still cannot finish the class like next month no It'll, it'll still take you to December, but it doesn't mean you cannot have all you need before the time. The goal is to provide you with all the resources, but the class does not end till the end of the semester. Uh, especially like you will not have your, you will not be able to do your project presentation till December, but you can be ready by next month and just keep it aside and you're good to go. I think it's in this day and age that we live in, uh, it's fine. Don't want to dictate the pace at which you move. But if you also require that kind of scheduling, uh, you don't want to take it on you, follow the modules on Canvas. So don't open the module until the week. It's up to you. Um, comments are due. There is no moving the due date. I apologize. But if you're unable to submit it, it's fine. We can work on something to see how you can close the great gap. Uh, but you can no longer go back and submit the comment after the due date. And the due date will be every Friday at 12 p.m. So let me give you an example. <clears throat> Today we are having this class. Let's see, this is module one, right? And there is the discussion board for module one. I've already asked the question. You are expected by Friday to really respond to it at 12 p.m. And I will tell you why Friday. It's because someone is going to write a report based on that. However, if you're unable to make it, it's fine. Each discussion board, there will be 10 discussion boards and each one of it, it will be two points. If you have lost the two point, it's not the end of life. Nor does it mean you have lost it completely. Let us know and we will work with you to see what you should do to supplement it. One thing I can assure you here is Whatever grade you want in this class, I'm willing to work with you to get it. What I will not do is give free points. So that's my bad habit. I will not give you a free credit, but I am willing to keep giving you additional work that will allow you to close any grade gap. So please, please, please plan ahead, let us know, but it doesn't mean if something comes up with your life, please, it's totally fine. If you are able to let us know, update us, that would be super helpful on our part to plan. But we understand that sometimes things come up and just deprioritize informing us and just live life, prioritize what uh, is the most important and we will think later and see what can be done. But we cannot allow you post comments after it's complete. Um, later on, you will understand why we cannot be flexible on that part. Overall, the discussions will be 20% of your grade. <clears throat> and there'll be two points per module. Now, again, all students should respond by commenting. Obviously, you're just going to comment. So please do not write it in a Word document, PDF, whatever. No, 
Just go into the discussion board, type it as a comment. That's it. You don't need to reply to other people's comment. It's not going to be a thread. No, just post yours. You can read other people's to learn from it. It's, I actually encourage it. You don't have to because it's not something we are tracking, but it will be beneficial if you want to. It's up to you. If you're overwhelmed and don't want to do that, usually you can access the class and the reports after if you want to learn from it. Assuming you are in this class because you're passionate about it, not because you're trying to meet just the grade and just move on. It's up to you, your call. Um, there is something. Some of you will see that, wow, I have to write 200 words per week. That's a lot. Not really. It's like one over three of a page. The words actually, what I began to realize is once we ask the questions and people kind of just read high level about it, then they began to realize they actually want to write more than 200 words. That has happened a lot. Some of you get carried away. Can happen. You are limited to 200 words. And again, we will talk about why 200 words later. If you are writing a report and you have to read everyone's comment to write the report, which every one of you will write one report eventually, it's unfair to have someone write 2,000 words and now you have to read it to write a report. No, 200 words is the maximum. I assume there are, let's say there are put, uh, 20 people in the class and everybody has written 200 words. So that's like 4,000 words, which is like three to four pages of Word document. I think to read that and just write a report is justified because you do it only once in the semester. That will be 10 comments, I think I saw you uh, pointed that. Uh, is it Vito or Vito? If it's the former, just put former and it's the latter. Just yeah, it's, latter. Yeah, yeah, it's Vito. Yeah, so there will be 10 discussion comments, Vito, every week. In general, there will be 11, but you're expected to participate in 10 because you will write a report for one week. And um, can you go on? And um, we will show, I will show you on Canvas um, what the report will look like. Uh, again, another reason behind writing the 150 minimum or anything between like maximum of 200 is I want you to be concise, which you will begin to realize in your PhD as you begin to. Well, I know <laughs> there was a student who said, listen, this is not a PhD. Stop introducing those philosophical side of things. You don't need to tell us to be concise on whatever. I'm like, yeah, that's justified. It's a DSC, but guess what? Potato, potato, you decide. But yeah, so you have to be concise. You have to write your abstract. You will start writing research papers, probably. Uh, I don't know the full detail of the requirement, and then it will come handy, especially to some of you who are new to the program. You'll begin to see it. Some of you have visit. There is this 800 level class, which is meant to teach you research method. I believe some of you that have already taken the class know what I'm talking about. Uh, I hate to say this because it sounds very high school-ish and kind of undergrad, but I've seen it happen. No copy and paste, please. No, don't do that. Uh, again, I will expect you to have three references for your comment. So let's say I um, introduce a topic around this administration has put out the new executive order, the new cybersecurity executive order on how to strengthen this and this and this. Uh, I will actually want you to go look, before you comment, it will be helpful for your comment to be framed and influenced by what, how the industry is responding to that executive order. If you look at all of these big techs, Google, Microsoft, Apple, um, I think the administration also just met with all the big techs, Amazon, all of them are pushing out documents on how they are going to help respond to that executive order. As you look at it, whether you want to critique it or you want to make a reference, I literally just mentioned like four or five documents. You don't have to read everything. You can read the summary, it's fine, but it will be helpful. A lot of academicians, I think I've seen Harvard, I've seen uh, also like think tanks, like Brookings, I think I saw also CFR, all of these uh, 
organization like MITRE, I think NIST also and CISA, they have all responded to like the executive order on um, just responding to it. So there you have it. People, a lot of experts are also talking on like Twitter, their personal blog. I don't think, I think I've seen something from March, but I don't know if I've seen anything from Bush and I, I haven't been up to date. One of these kind of experts in the field have, like some of them have been responding to it, like the new CISA director, is it Jen Sanim or something? I was seeing it, she has also uh, given a talk based on that. So that's like from an expert, at least three references, just Google the topic or go find some information. Even if it's international related, trust me, people are talking about it. Right now what's happening in Afghanistan and a lot of record, go look it up. A lot of cybersecurity folks, a lot of um, uh, from agencies, from organizations are talking about the record retention, record management, and all of those political related stuff, uh, governance trends. There will be abundance of content. It's a hot uh, sector. So people are always keeping an eye. What next? Including at the international level, by the way, international organizations, all of those, they do that. You have to do. Uh, I guess the first point have answered your question with detail. You are expected to participate in 10 discussions. Um, obviously, understand the requirements, uh, comment and canvas, and all of those. Learn to be concise, plan if you can, uh, the deadline. They're kind of strict on it, as I mentioned. Please ask questions, but please, point number eight. Please, please, please be cordial. We'll introduce again topics. I'm fine. Crack a joke with the Nigerian prince. You know, I'm Nigerian. I might be the Nigerian prince as well. Or maybe fortune will be. Uh, we all have Nigerian's background, but uh, we can introduce topics related to US China relations, uh, US Russia relations, cyber security related stuff related to that. Um, it's just natural and understandable, especially if you're within US Gov. If there is a threat, just putting a name out there, but if Russia, Iran, China attacks the US to you, it's still wrong, right? To someone from Russia or China or Iran, to them, it's actually the right thing to do because probably they see it as a response to something the US have done, again diverse perspective, but we can still converse without necessarily enforcing our persona into the conversation. So please, let's do that. Um, what next? Let's talk about the report. Oof. I can, I know we usually take a break and I did not touch on that. Why don't we take 10 minutes break? Actually, let's take, 15 minute break and come back at 8 p.m. Eastern time and then we'll deep dive into this. Fortune, please pause. Do not uh, kind of like end the recording, but just pause the screen sharing session. Sorry, the recording session. I'll be here, but some of you might want to take a break. Let's have 15 minutes break. Fortune. <laughs> um, perfect. So getting into the report. Uh, Quick recap on the comments. We just covered it like every week. It's going to happen 400 words and whatever, right? So there will be 11 reports on total. Sorry, 11 comments, discussion comments in total, but you will only participate in 10. The reason for that is we will release a spreadsheet that you will sign up, but you will pick one week. You know your time, you know your schedule, totally fine. Uh, you should plan ahead, but you would pick one week where you're not going to comment. You're just going to read everybody's comment. And that is one key thing around 200 word limitation. Imagine if we leave it as people can read 1000 words and in the comment now there are like 10,000, oh my God. Like whoever is writing that report, yeah, good luck to them. So limited to 2000, no matter what. But every student will pick just one week where their role is not to comment, but rather wait until 
after Friday at 12 p.m., which is the due time to comment. After that, they will read everybody's comment, everybody, and now formulate a report, a single report based on that. And that is this cybersecurity discussion report. Now let's deep dive into what the report is and the requirements for that. The report will be primarily based on the weekly discussion comments, right? So if I ask, hey, the US have blocked TikTok, or maybe the US plans on blocking TikTok, everybody writes that comment. But no single person wrote anything about, well, the US need to block TikTok because obviously having TikTok within the US, it's, uh, I don't know, a national security threat, especially related to how a lot of military folks are also using TikTok and their geolocation bases now being shared with TikTok, which is a Chinese-based company and all of that, just me creating stuff. Nobody made a comment about that. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to make that point. You can, but you're adding extra work to yourself. Just focus primarily, no need for deep research outside. Just focus on what the comment is from everybody and write a single report based on that. As such, it's not going to be like a research paper, it's just a report, you know, like a brief summary. Well, I wouldn't call it a brief, but more like a I don't know, I don't want to say summary as well, because it's almost to tell them what, but right based on that, and uh, there will be a template on how you should write it. Not necessarily how you should write it, but there is a template for the format that it should be in. So you should have like this introduction phase on what the topic is, and the introduction will kind of like, you know, set the reader into the different points that have been made, but just high level. And then the body of the report will include the deep dive points and you can add yours and formulate it. And someone might say, yeah, the right thing to do is the US should absolutely block TikTok or block Huawei. Then allow Huawei to operate within the US. No American uh, personal data should actually be within why we servers in China and whatever. Someone might make that point. And if you have a concurrent point, it's fine. You can add it in your report. You own the report. You own the story of that report so long as it's based on the comment. Um, that was point number five. So the report must follow a story slash narrative. Again, even though it's, your, it's the student's work, but please paraphrase it. Do not copy and paste what another student wrote. Do not say, oh, this student said this, 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 and the student said this, 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 this. As such, you're just copying the comments and I think it makes no sense. So definitely um, put it in your own words. I understand it's quite a tedious work, especially the short time, because you are Friday after 12 p.m. and then you only, and I hate this, I feel bad about it, but you have that Friday and then by Monday, 6 p.m. it's due. The reason is we want the report to be ready such that even if people do not read it in the class, at least we can now put it in front of us and just have a discussion in the class about it as if time permits. So it will always drive like the weekly conversations and things like that at a high level, someone will chime and that will be the perfect time to now ease up. Something that you want to counteract rather than make it as a second comment, just hold up and for questions. That would be a perfect time to discuss that. Uh, and then you find like uh, you're not out of things to say, right? Um, yes. Because every student will have three references, right? And it's going to be added to the comments. Same on your part. If you are making as you're writing the report, just please include those proper citations related to it. Um, you also have the option to ignore a student comment completely because maybe it doesn't make sense, maybe it's incomplete, and maybe the student did not necessarily understand the question. Um, you know, maybe it's not a because it's not a field they are very conversant in or a topic they are conversant in you might find certain students are unable to really provide, I wouldn't say a meaningful feedback, but I would say they lack the full understanding of the 
um, situation. So as such, their comment might not be the most uh, informative or the most valuable. You, as a reporter, you have the option of not necessarily including that. So let me give you a quick example. Maybe we can introduce <laughs> the fact that um, U.S. does not have any data regulation law at the federal level. We don't. The U.S. doesn't. When you look at a place like the EU, it's not only just at the national, like different countries, but it's even the entire region as like the EU have GDPR. Uh, no, I think GDPR is UK based, but EU is thinking of leveraging it, right? Um, you go to a lot of countries, even Nigeria has a national data regulation law, but then you go to other countries that do not have it. To the US, someone might think of it like, why the heck would the US have data regulation laws? It doesn't make sense, blah, blah, blah. But it makes sense to others. If you talk to someone who is in the ads business and marketing, having a data regulation law within the US actually limits their business. It's a billion dollar industry, right? Same reason why you just sent, you're just closing your mortgage, all of a sudden, John from New Home Insurance is sending you a mail in your mailbox, right? That's part of information sharing. Now, if a US have, or even if you live in Cali, now you have the option of saying, no, don't share that information with me. I said, John is unable to get your business or send out those things. So from a business perspective, the US doesn't have that. It makes sense from a business standpoint, maybe. Um, there are even lobbies who doesn't want that to happen. From a technology standpoint, you are finding big tech in itself taking the role of actually now defining the data regulations and requirements. Look at Apple, right? Apple is really making its app store and the requirements very rigorous, like very privacy driven. Um, the data collections within Apple devices is continuously getting reduced. Like Facebook can collect much. Well, they still can, but Apple is constantly pushing towards what Facebook can collect and also how transparent those kind of things are. If you work for Facebook within the AI department or within, you know, I would say the, um, let's say Instagram. If you work within Facebook, Instagram, where revenue is generated by ads, you need to collect certain information. Now to you, what Apple is doing is really, really pissing you off. Justified. And it's also justified for a consumer to feel like, yes, Apple is empowering me with the tools that will allow me to say Facebook can no longer track my location. Diverse perspective, you will see them. So based on this example, someone might randomly, just out of the blue, comment that really doesn't need a data regulation law because they have all the servers that collects, like they own all the maps that allow them to know who is collecting what. Yeah, that, okay, what the heck are you telling me? Doesn't really make sense, but I understand. Probably they are not, they are seeing it from a different perspective that we don't necessarily understand. Or maybe they are actually applying, I mean to call us country here, but you know, maybe they're applying you know, I'll pick a country that I can always pick on. And if anyone gets pissed, you can come after me, it's fine. Maybe they just have a perspective from Ghana, Ghanaian perspective, who cares about Ghana? You know? So that's like, maybe that's how Ghana is responding to data regulations or whatever, but they are trying to now apply it to the US, which we are really not aware of. So you can read that out and not include it in your report. Or maybe they are, we are talking at the state level. California just part. Uh, California have a very um, data private and privacy kind of law in place and whatsoever. Maybe Wyoming has one as well, but nobody cares about Wyoming things. If you're from Wyoming, then come after me. If you're from Ghana, yeah, bring it on. I'm ready for you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, all of those. Um, 
the reporter, feel free to read that out. Took a lot of time explaining that, but yeah, you get the what we're trying to say. Okay. Obviously, on Canvas, the due date for that is Monday at 6:30 p.m. That is a little bit flexible, meaning uh if something happens, you're unable to please just let us know ahead of time. We might be able to um accommodate you simultaneously later since there is no dependency on that. Now, one of the reasons, as I mentioned, if you go back into the comment requirements, we said it's due on Friday at um, 4 p.m. The reason is this report, whoever the reporter is for the week, their work is dependent on everybody's comment being available. As such, once they have written the report or it's past 12, they have started their own work. There is no need for, and if you have missed the comment, there's no need for you to add it. You can add it, but they're not gonna come, add it the, to the um, report. And we might not necessarily consider it as part of grade, but please go ahead, add it if you are gonna bring in another perspective. And uh, we will, like myself, unfortunately, will work with you offline to see how you can close the gap on that grade you miss. Assuming you miss, say module three comment and you don't decide you decide not to tell us to like the final some week of the semester i honestly and everything is going on you've been fine just participating on everything but you never brought it to our attention on how to close that gap yeah you own that and we absolutely might decide not to uh accompany that but we'll see how it goes requirements i think it's very straightforward i've touched on everything one that will, will sorry Everyone is expected to only write one report and you will select the week you want to write your report. And because we said there will be 11 uh, discussion sections, but you only do 10, it means eventually by the end of the semester, there will be 11 reports. However, we have more than 11 people. What does that mean? It means two people can actually write a report for a single week, but their work is no at all um dependent or related with one another they cannot even collaborate it's completely individual but it's fine for them to write um two people to pick a single week that they are going to write the report i expect to see a different from them um submit it in the word format and then uh obviously number four i think um a lot of resources are available at Marymount related to library stuff. There are a lot of guidance on whatsoever. We are not using any format like APA or whatever, but still, if you need guidance on how to write, maybe the template is not enough. There are a lot of things. And if you want, it's a class. So there could be international students who English is not their first language. It's not my first language. I always mess up when I write. It's understandable, but maybe I'm justifying it because I'm a mess as well. But it's um there are a lot of resources within Marymount. You can schedule for them to actually read your report. And honestly, if that's one of the reasons why you will not be able to submit on time, let us know and uh, we'll work with you. It's fine. Maybe you'll submit the early draft for just us to see it and then you make it better towards the end. Totally fine. Uh, I believe there are folks that they're primary, I don't know. I think there is someone was telling me, but there are folks within the library who are their work include proofreading students' work. So get in touch with them if you think you'll need them. Please don't submit via email. Hey, did I say? Yeah, it's 1,500 minimum words. Uh, and that said, I think there is no maximum. You do you. Proper citations and all of those. And um, depending on time, if you submit on Monday, and we finish our lectures and there's like a bit of time we must spend you know, 15 minutes, 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 deliberated. That is not a requirement as part of the class. So students can, if you have something to do, you can always drop. But for those who want to converse, uh, touch a little bit on that weekend. I'm overly chatting, so always happy to talk. Um, so what do you need to do? Now that I've finished explaining the report. Your to-do list, sign up for the week you want to write your report. We have not released the sign up shit yet. We will send an email once it's ready, probably by Friday. And you will have like uh, the entire of next week and 
everything to just go ahead and sign up. Uh, next is understand the requirements. Obviously, uh, where the report template is, and there'll be a rubric as well. And then um, also, please plan ahead if you can. If something happened, it's fine, but whenever possible, or you need any support or whatsoever, please plan ahead, including the library. Trust me, you are not going to be the only one who required the library resource support and help. As such, if you are certain you will need one, please try to block their time and get on their schedule because you don't want yeah, something is due tomorrow and you are reaching out to them today. Deadline and um, yeah, if you have anything, feel free to reach out, ask questions. And send us a Canvas email, myself and Fortune. Please always email us both unless it is something personal related. Feel free to just reach me out alone and cut fortune as well. Just because fortune is also a student, if you are not comfortable, it's fine. But if it's class related, let me know. On my part as well, you don't need to share personal stuff, just request. And there are a lot of my remote resources. We lived in, a, we are living in a different time, this COVID. Nobody can plan things. Something comes up. Do not prioritize updating us until you can. It's understandable. Okay, the last thing you need to do, the last uh, deliverable of the class, a paper. A lot of students hate this. But hey, you sign up for a PhD, it means you are willing to read a lot and write a lot, right? Um, there will be a risk strategy paper. What do I mean a risk strategy paper? Basically a research paper, but without in-depth, research from like a literature review standpoint, but more of um, an applied research. So we will introduce a problem that is within the entire sector. And we would look at proposing strategies on how to approach that. It's totally fine to limit the strategy and apply it to a specific place or specific kind of uh, maybe just limit the strategy and specify it's only applicable to a certain either industry organization sector it doesn't matter just like so when we started the class i was talking about how a library might prioritize availability and we work for dod or one of the intels or any national security the priority will be confidentiality and probably healthcare that is meant to put information out like ccdc my prioritize integrity so we can introduce maybe an ongoing challenge that the entire industry is facing maybe around for uh, deep fix or oh, actually no ignore deep fix let's use ransomware right and maybe again i keep saying maybe it's because i haven't thought so much about this but it is possible that currently the top issue that cloud service providers are having had to do with dealing with ransomware because we know how to deal with ransomware and on-prem environments, but we don't know how to deal with it in cloud service environments. That doesn't really align, but hypothetically speaking, let's assume that it's a thing. So we might introduce that and look into, be it from a policy strategy, uh, policy, technical approach, and um, including skill set and whatsoever. How should we approach maybe um reducing maybe ransomware attacks that is targeting cloud service providers, maybe AWS, Azure, and whatever, right? That is too broad because cloud service provider pro providers tends to provide a lot of industries, a lot of organizations that have different approach to different cyber risk approach and methodologies. So it's totally okay to take that, contextualize it and say, okay, we are going to look at it from a health perspective how health organizations should approach it, or we're going to look at it from a um, national security perspective, or we'll look at it from, you know, a uh, public uh, federal civilian perspective, you name it. We 
we would work with you into helping frame it. Another thing is I will work on providing similar examples, but definitely non hypothetical something that is actually applicable in the industry uh, and currently something that is ongoing, but I'm only providing the topics because to some of you it's new, to some of you strategy research is completely a brand new thing. And it's not a bad thing, but some of you don't have to, like your work does not probably even entail making a risk-based decision or risk-based approach or recommendation or whatsoever. So at least introducing the topics will allow you to look at one and see where it aligns and you will continuously work and frame it, right? That I am deeply, deeply engaged. However, if you are an OG that have, um, you're a veteran who is really in the place, right? Uh, I don't know, maybe you have been working a lot with Ron Ross, right? And authoring all of those nest whatsoever. Or probably you authored a lot of those research related stuff. Who knows? Maybe your work is actually what's influencing the industry. Please propose your topic, work on it. Absolutely happy to support it. Another thing is, if you are going, you have started working on your dissertation or you need to work on your dissertation or you're working on your dissertation and you want to introduce that as part of the paper, happy to work with you on that as well. That allows you to kind of kill two birds with one stone, like introduce, a do a little bit of work on your dissertation while it's, um, kind of um, satisfy this class requirement. If it's your dissertation, I might not be as engaged. I will be willing to be informed, but I absolutely will not engage and influence it uh, because you do have your primary advisor. That's their job, right? But I am willing to accept a portion of it from a secure, that deals with security and find its applicability in this class and it satisfies this class that reduces your workload. Happy to do that. Okay, the paper must be original. Absolutely, must be strategy driven, meaning applicable. So nothing hypothetical. Um, and as I mentioned, I'll work with each student. Now, <clears throat> to some of you, you have published papers before, to some of you it will be a brand new concept, that's fine. Don't let it uh, scare you if you have never published a paper and it is not a class requirement. I will provide a template. I'll provide all of those things. But if you want to submit the paper, I will actually, let me take a step back. I am encouraging folks to submit the paper, a journal or a conference for publication, especially if it's original, right? Get a publication out, it's fine. It will help you with your PhD. Um, if that is to happen, let me know if you're interested in that and we will look at how it is and probably I might push beyond the class requirements a little bit in your paper with an understanding that we are pushing it, not because, uh, not to satisfy the class requirement, but rather to make it good enough for the paper or for that conference or for that journal, at least to submit it as a draft, right? On my part, um, if your paper is submitted to any journal and accepted for publication, you don't need to work with me on that, absolutely not. No, you can take it on your part if you are com uh, comfortable with that and everything, totally fine. But if the paper is to get accepted, you get the full grade. If you decide not to submit the paper or whatever, then you will just write it, submit it in the class and I'll read it and kind of go over it and put my risk, uh, like my strategy lens and uh, evaluate the paper and give you the appropriate grade. You can still get the full grade, right? But yeah, if it gets accepted by any journal, it goes over my any review that I will do. So you get your full points. Um, it's possible. So journals, 
you don't necessarily pay depending on the journal and place before you you're fine to go select a journal but you know if this is your first time publishing please don't go select any type of journal or conference because later on in your career you might actually hit yourself for publishing in that conference because it's really not repeatable and i'm happy to work with you i'll also kind of just submit a couple of repeatable places that people can publish but if your paper is to get accepted at a conference not necessarily a journal sometimes they have a requirement for you to pay for the paper to be published and in, uh, including requiring you to travel to present maybe now due to covid you might just present it virtually you don't have to pay out of pocket probably maybe just let me know um the cyber department i think there is a budget and hold me to that that's why i say it, it is not guaranteed but we can talk to professor murphy to see if you can be supported on if the department will take on paying for that publication entirely assuming it's on a conference uh just let us know and i'll uh, we'll see how it goes again don't hold me to it like yeah. he said if i write this paper and submit it guaranteed it will get paid nope i did not because i know my Ghanaian friends will think like that's what i said no i did not say that okay um final paper will be due um 12 13. obviously if you're targeting a specific conference we have to follow their timeline uh let's work on that uh let me look into that as well with you um it's totally fine for the paper to be submitted and accepted and it might just be submitted not necessarily fully accepted and then the acceptance will come after the class ends don't worry we'll just work on it just let me know um what are the requirements you will write one paper i will make sure i put all of these requirements and some of the proposed topics before the next class that way it gives you the entire semester to be thinking about it and if you have your own thing totally fine you already know the requirements are out there start brainstorming uh what next trying to be mindful of time oh okay we still have a couple of time okay definitely you're publishing a paper or submitting a paper that is good enough so grammar free no plag uh, plagiarism we are actually going to check for that and uh, a lot of resources available also for that. I will provide the template for you to submit, but obviously if you are targeting a specific conference or journal, you sh like we would work with whatever um, the conference and journal template is, right? Since most of them tend to have their own templates, but if you're not thinking of publishing it, uh, any of the conferences or journals, um, this is the template we will provide in class. Minimum of 2,000 watts to 2,500. Now, again, if you are targeting a journal or a conference uh, to publish it outside, if the word limitation is 1,500, that's fine. We will work on that and it's still satisfied. So long as we submit it and uh, get it there. But if it's just the class, please keep it within that um, 2,000 to 2,500. Most times you find papers tend to have word limitations uh, especially the maximum uh what <laughs> there is a there are a lot of from reddit to twitter to facebook to whatsoever a lot of groups and research papers and it's it's an art to make a paper make the word counts and capture everything right so we'll do that please also a minimum of at least 15 citations is expected again on your to do, there will be the sign up and the select the topic you would like to write on. Uh, on my part, I'm just proposing different topics. You are not bound to them. You are welcome to propose yours. You're welcome to pick one of the ones that I propose and frame it and tailor it to your specific um, uh, ones. Happy to support that. Let's just set up some time to discuss it. Um, again, just stay up to date. And understand the template rubric, the requirements, and uh, understand the resources available to you and plan ahead. And then ask questions. Okay. The next thing is I've said a lot. Let's recap everything. 
What are the deliverables? Again, I've itemized all the deliverables in the class from one to five, the introduction, everything I've, I've already spoken about. It's listed here. The total points for each set, uh, each deliverable. Please can everybody go on mute, just a second, okay? The total points you can get for each deliverable, it's also highlighted um, under the total points, like active participation five, 30 for group work, uh, weekly comments will give you two points per comment, making it 20 if you participate in the turn of it. There'll be 11 as we mentioned entirely. But the discussion report will carry 20 points and the paper will carry 25 points. The due dates, um, 11.29 for the group paper, as well as when the presentations will start. And then um, every Friday for the comments and the Monday, the following Monday at 6.30 p.m right when the class is about to start. Please keep be mindful that the time is ESD. And then um, 12, 13 for um, the paper. For some of you who are either deployed or out of the country or in a different time zone that this class time is like, I think people in India and China, like right now it's almost, 9 a.m. I don't want you to, if it's, uh, I don't want this class to have people who really change their schedule, especially, you know, people with kids, people like people, like it's just a nightmare, my managing schedule and a lot of people that complexity on server. So these classes are always recorded and we'll be uploading them and the links will be available forever week on Canvas. Again, there is the active participation. So we'll find a way to accommodate it. Um, just let us know if also the submission time for things, it's really a challenging time for you. Please let us know ahead so we figure out like um, the right time depending on your time zone. You don't have to be bound by that. I don't want people waking up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., just because they need to submit uh, a paper. That is absolutely, I mean, they can submit way earlier if they plan well, but same thing, they have every right to say, no, I want to submit it one second before the deadline. It's your time and it's okay. Just don't wake up at 3 a.m., 1 a.m., 12 a.m. to do that. Um, let us know and I will find the right time for you. Also, um, please, do not, um, I wouldn't say do not, but we can agree on things verbally, like just like right now in the class, you ask a question and you, you know, maybe you request for something and we agree on that. And then it comes time to really on our part, especially myself, to honor that thing that we kind of did. Please, please, please um, make sure you kind of like, send an email or something like that for us to capture it because there is so much going on. To you, you only need to satisfy the requirement I set. On my part, I need to satisfy everybody's um, um, kind of request. As such, it's, um, it's hard for me to manage unless we have like email or someplace like that. We do well with documentations, but again, so the additional notes, please don't let it scare you. I'm not being overly strict. It's just a couple of things to let you know. Um, please review everything in your own time. We'll accommodate everything. But just like everybody, we also, it's actually a nightmare as well, work-related. Just like everybody, you don't need to worry about. But as you can see, um, the tech, this overview on what server is highly informative. I am not saying it's perfect. You will definitely have a lot of questions, but please, please, please refer to it first. I think I will send an email. There's this video of Snoop Dogg saying people should read their syllabus. So please read the syllabus, please. A lot of the questions you might come across or you might wanna ask my actually have already been answered. So please also save us some time. But again, we are not stopping you from reaching out, especially if things are unclear. It's possible. Everything I've just mentioned since this class that does not make sense. It's on me to go over it again with you. So let me know. If you can plan, 
it's on you to plan ahead, but it's not on you to decide what happens, right? So we understand life happens. Things are being controlled. Deprioritize the class. Deprioritize informing us. Still with life and let us know later. But please, whenever you can, if you can plan ahead or let us know ahead of time, it allows us to also better accommodate you. Then the second thing is reaching out. I don't log into Canvas on a daily basis, just letting you know. Once I put everything there, I tend to log into Canvas Fridays and Saturdays. That's just the truth. Um, so if you send me a message via Canvas, I will reply to it, but it might be delayed. I don't know about Fortune's um, schedule. He will let you know later on, or if you reach out to him, you will learn from that, but letting you know mine. mine. Also, emails. I know I'm not being flexible, but I apologize. A lot of folks tend to use their personal email for the Marimont communication as you know, flexible as it is. I also want to say Marimont tend to publish instructors' emails. It's out there, but from the syllabus and whatsoever. So I'll be honest with you. There are all of these folks that try to sell you the academic software or conferences or inviting to talk or whatever. They are constantly spamming one's email. So to me, I have 100% filtered my Marymount email, totally uh, prioritize emails that come from Marymount domain. So if you don't use your marymount.edu email to send me an email, you use your personal, don't be surprised that I will not reply because it's probably going to that mailbox. Um, it's just what it is. It's a nightmare, but no. Uh, if it's urgent, feel free to type the urgent because uh, then while I get email notification on my phone and whatsoever, if it's Marimond, I will not reply to it, especially if it requires me to kind of like be behind a computer, check your grade or provide you whatsoever updated information, I don't necessarily tend to reply that until Friday and Saturday. Those are mostly my office hours. Uh, you can access my Marimont calendar. Every student can access that. So I don't tend to reply to the emails, especially if you request me to do actions beyond just responding or providing clarity. But if it's urgent that requires my instant response, please, please, please just type the word urgent. You'll be surprised. There are people who will send me email at 3.38 a.m. and I'll reply. Um, other than that, please, again, I'll keep saying this, deprioritize informing us of things. If life happens, just deal with life. Let us know later. I don't think there is any urgency or urgent thing in this class. Even if it means it's beyond the finals week, where you missed everything. I am, I'm not trying to show that I'm powerful, but I'm empowered to literally extend the class for you, right? Um, COVID happened, who knows? A lot of things happens. I can dictate when you finish the class. It doesn't have to be December, but please, it's up to you, just know. Just because I said that doesn't mean you should extend it, because if you extend it, it's not workload on me, it's you extending your workload beyond the semester. But if it, if there is a need, even if it's freaking December next year, willing to work with you to submit that, and I will email the registrar office to update your grade or whatever. Nothing is written in stone, right? So uh, instructions, 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 uh, verbal agreements are difficult to track, and overall, the class runs on EST. Time zone. Grade range, nothing like 94, 92 is an A, A plus or whatever. Let's keep it simple. Just A, B, C. You're a PhD student, you don't care about grades. I know a lot of people do, but you know, we'll see. So 90 to 100 is A, 80 to 89.9 is B, and C is right there. I think anything below B is considered a fail in PhD. I don't know, but it is what it is. You can make it what you want. Okay, okay. This brings us to the end of this overview. And I would like to take 10 or five minutes to quickly go over Canvas structure. But first, does anybody have any questions?
or shall I quickly go over Canvas and you can begin typing your questions on the, in the chat group where we can cover it. I think I will do that. If you have specific questions, either you type them or please still write them down. Let me quickly just go over the Canvas and show how it is, okay? Unfortunately, I'll have to stop sharing my screen because for some reason I was unable to figure out how to share the entire screen. I could only share the PowerPoint, so just a second. Okay. And slideshow, minimize it, and I'm gonna go into Canvas now. Give me a second. Canvas. Let me know if you can actually I should I would know if you can see my screen. So give me a second. Okay. I believe everybody can see my canvas. Uh fortune, if you can see, can you just add it to the chat? Just tell me yes or no, or someone comment so I can proceed. Just a comment is fine. Yes, you want me to collect any uh, questions you said? Um, no, not the questions. I was talking about uh, Misty has already responded, so no problem. People can see I was yep. uh, our screen share, so that's fine. Thank you. All right. So this is my view on Canvas. Uh, the student view on your side, you should see it something like this. Give me a second. So something like this, right? All of these modules will be unlocked for you as soon as you complete two tasks. And that's the only thing I lock, which is introduce yourself and just mark it as done as you have read, kind of like gone through the class resources. So obviously uh, all of you have gone through it. That's why you are able to get the meeting invite, but included reviewing the deck, like the syllabus, the templates, the rubrics, the sign up sheets, everything will be on that page, the class resources page. Uh, this is just a general discussion, but I don't participate in it. I, don't, I hardly check it. But if you're looking for a group or someone who's technical or you're trying to identify Misty, uh, if she's technical or whatever, and you don't want to send an email, you can converse there. Just know that I see everything as well there. Um, for that one single discussion report, just the report, we will be using this place to upload the reports. So everybody will kind of submit their report there, but don't worry about it right now, uh, it's not a major. So as soon as you kind of just introduce yourself and mark us done, all of this should be unlocked for you. Right now, you will not see anything. There is no content. So like you come in here, let me get out of the student view. Okay. So in your part, it should look something like this, right? And uh, as you can see, uh, everything is aligned. You will see that uh, the 8 slash 30 is the date, which is today's date. We do not have the Labor Day weekend as the date because we're not meeting. If you refer to the syllabus, you will see that uh, we cannot say there's no class. And I believe the same thing for Thanksgiving. But yeah, we have the module two, module three, as I mentioned, two, three, and four, and five, and six will be lectures. And then seven, eight, nine, ten modules, and 11 will be activity. That's where we will do like practical stuff. Uh, not your project, but I will also do some practical things, do some secure deployment, probably invite someone. Uh, if anybody in the class have done, have some technical stuff they want to kind of show and walk through it, happy to provide an avenue for that, right? Um, this week we will begin like for the 29th and this two weeks, basically the week of uh, 1129 and that's after thanks, no, yeah, after Thanksgiving. And then, um, December 6th, that's when we will focus on project. So the po project presentations and re reports on whatever, right? We will have these finals, which is where we'll be submitting the risk strategy paper. So let's go back a little bit. What will it look like? Um, let's pick one. So this is just where I will put the lectures deck. Right now it's empty, but you will be able to see it. Targeting this Friday, uh, I might not meet Friday, but you would absolutely have it before the next class. Certainly, even if not everything, you have a huge chunk of it that allows you to plan ahead. Um, the discussions, 
this is where you will be commenting. And on my part, I will update this with like the question. And on your part, as a student, it should look something like this. Give me a second. So on your part, you will see the question here, and then you will respond to it as a comment. That's it for the discussion. Um, so how would you sign up for the sign up sheet and everything? It's going to be under the class resources. That's where the sign up sheets will be. Uh, they will be Excel spreadsheets. We are yet to kind of create them and link them. I forgot to mention this, but all my classes are usually open sourced after. So um, obviously not the, your names and your work, but rather the content, right? Like the PowerPoint there kind of everything. So previous classes and whatever, if you want to just navigate, I everything is on my GitHub repo. Feel free to do whatever you want to do with it. But this current deck is right here, the syllabus, and then I will update this with the link to, oh, I see why people are saying this is broken. It's because the link exists, but yeah, I'll update it and send out an email. This is the meeting invite. Feel free to use the Google Calendar or Outlook, same contents to just add it as a recurring meeting. And this is where I'll upload the templates and the rubrics, okay? Uh, going back, let's see again, uh, what next? So let's look at the student view. On your part, you sh it's very minimalistic in the sense that you only see the modules, you only see the place you will go and see your grades. So it's going to look something like this, where it will begin pre-populating everything, you see? Here on all the discussions, basically that's what your grade side will look like. So you have that, but you also need the people section, right? To see your classmates and everything, a list of everybody in the class, including the tier and whatnot. This is where you will sign up for your groups, okay? Just signing up with the group, not necessarily identifying who is, like within the group, who is leading what. That will be done in a spreadsheet because Canvas doesn't have a support for that capability. But this is where you will sign up for your group. Let me get out of student view and you will see how it will look like. Give me a second. Why is this loading? Oh no. Okay, cool. So let's give an example. Uh, maybe Daniel will then be dragged to join the group one or whatsoever. And don't worry, automatically it's not going to let you have more than three people in a group. We will sort it out. I think right now I'm seeing 17. So one group will have two people, but it's fine. We'll cover it. We'll sort it out. And eventually, if there are more people in the class or some people drop or whatever it is, we'll figure it out. It's totally okay. And um, so this is how you will sign up for the group. Okay, now going back. Let me see. Okay. Question time. Any questions? Literally, that's it. I'm done with everything and time for questions. We still have in the class, we have like 20 minutes left in the time of the class. Feel free to unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. And if there is none, then I guess either we suck a lot. Maybe it's fortune, not me. I know I don't suck. Just kidding. But um, either we suck a lot. Or it's quite informative that uh, you didn't have any question. You want to just digest it and Bring yourself up to speed. Totally fine. We can do that. Any questions for us? Who doesn't have any question? That's all. Nobody has a question. Nobody. Can you hear me though? Fortune, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I think we just did. I think you did a good job explaining everything. I think your syllabus, everything was straight to the point. <laughs> No, you're good. Silence is acceptance. Okay, well, that's a confirmation. Thank yeah. you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, it was a good job. Good job. Well done. Everybody okay? So no questions, I assume? Well, if you do, you have uh, emails, you have Canvas. You can also send a pigeon if you want. <laughs> that's totally fine. But um, yeah, well, thank you, everybody. Um, The slide is up. The syllabus is up and you have access to canvas and we will update all the content much later and uh yeah please digest it we have uh there is no class next week it's labor day weekend enjoy your time 
but it also gives you some time to kind of wrap your head around things. We will create the poll we were talking about and you will see it because we'll send out an email very detailed on how everything is. And um, if there's something missing that you want to see much later on, let us know and uh, we'll see if it's applicable to the class. But other than that, thank you so much, everybody. Looking forward to the semester. Welcome about. Thanks. Yeah. Good night. Good lecture. Awesome. Good. You too. Thank um, you. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Roger, thanks, and have a great day.